guys, this is the second part of uh, the lecture on excitation coupled contraction. And we left off talking about um, this neuron, right? This motor neuron. This is what we're talking about right here. And when I left off on the last lecture, we were talking about these neurotransmitters that are inside of the motor neuron, more specifically inside the axon bulb. And the axon bulb is the place where the neurotransmitters are going to be released. So let me move forward for one second and let me just draw for you in real time a neuron, right? So neurons have these branches on the top of them, right? It's a cell, a neuron is a type of cell. And it has these branches that have these like finger-like projections. And we call these dendrites. And you don't really need to know what they are, but a dendrite is where we receive a message from another neuron. Um, so we have the body of the neuron, and in the body we have the nucleus, right? You don't need to know this, I'm just trying to orient you um, on how the neuron looks when it sends its neurotransmitter so that you can have a better understanding of this um, when it comes to the motor neuron. So. A neuron has a long axon like this. It's one of the few cells that have an axon. And I'll just write axon here for you. Because on the last lecture, we were talking about axon bulbs. And then I told you the neuron branches out. And it has these bulbs like this. And then we have another one branching out like this. And it has a bulb there. And then we have another one branching out, and we have a bulb there like that. Okay, so these are what we call the axon bulbs. And just think of like a light bulb in your house. It, this kind of looks like a light bulb in your house, right? So if I go back, when we're talking about the axon bulb, we're talking about this section right here. And let me move back. Uh, this way. So this is the axon bulb. Um, and it's showing you that inside we have these neurotransmitters. So if I go back to the picture that I just drew and I say, okay, let's zoom in on this one right here. And I'm going to draw it like this. Okay. Inside the axon bulb we have all these different neurotransmitters. Um, and let me just get a different color. But most importantly, inside the axon bulb, we have these vesicles. And I told you on the last lecture, these vesicles, oops, sorry about that. My left hand keeps hitting the slides. These vesicles have inside of them something called acetylcholine or a neurotransmitter. You should probably know both of the words though because I might try to use those on the exam and just say that inside of these vesicles are all of these neurotransmitters. And what are these things? They're essentially just a chemical, right? So when we talk about biochemistry, we're talking about these chemicals in the body that make biological processes happen, such as a muscle contraction. So what's going to happen is when the neuron or the motor unit receives a message from the brain telling the muscle to contract. Well, what's gonna happen is, let me zoom back out here, this neuron is going to fire an action potential. And it's going to depolarize. Now that's just a really fancy word for sending a shock wave, follow my pen, sending a shock wave, an electrical shock wave, all the way down the axon. And then that shock wave is going to travel all the way to the bulbs, and all the way over here to the bulbs, and all the way over here, and all the way over here. And once that sh sorry. Once that shock wave, oh my goodness, once that shock wave makes its way down to these axon bulbs, well then, all of those chemical messengers that are inside of the vesicles, 
they are going to be released. So what happens then is that acetylcholine is going to be released from the neuron. And this is where the neuron is going to communicate with the skeletal muscle. So if we zoom in back over here, follow my pen, and that message from the brain is coming down in like an electrical shock wave, well, that's going to trigger these neurotransmitters to be released. So what will happen then is those neurotransmitters, they will leave the vesicles and they will then try to communicate with skeletal muscle. And again, remember what I said, this is where that message turns from electrical to mechanical, right? So it's in this space that we have that conversion of electrical to mechanical, and it's all because of acetylcholine. And when we initial, when we write acetylcholine, we just write A C H, um, or we can write A C H Y. There's different ways of doing it, but I'm just going to put A C H right now, and you know that is a chemical messenger. Chemical messenger. Okay, so that's how these neurotransmitters are going to be released. And if we look over here at this picture one more time, and let me clean it up, okay? This is where you need to take really, really good notes. That message from the CNS is coming down the motor neuron. We have that shock wave coming like this, right? And coming like this, and that shock wave is going to move out to this axon bulb. And that shock wave is going to move out to this axon bulb. And then it's going to trigger the release of these chemical messengers. And again, we call those chemical messengers acetylcholine, and it's right here. That's how you say that. So what is going to happen now? Well, you can see that, uh, let me highlight it, you can see that those chemical messengers have been released here. You see those green little dots? I'm highlighting it here in this space. Well, those chemical messengers are going to be released into that space and then waiting on the other side are going to be receptors that receive that message. So if you look here, sorry about that, my thing's acting up. If you look here, you can see that this tells us there are acetylcholine receptors. So remember I said that the neurotransmitters are, uh, we shorten their name by saying A-C-H. Well, here you can see that there are receptors that will recognize that chemical messenger. And it's here is one, here is another one, here is another one, and here is another one. And just like we talked about with troponin and calcium, a receptor is a protein that looks like this. And usually it is bound to the membrane, which we had talked about in skeletal muscle, is the sarcolemma, right? So I'm just kind of drawing a membrane here that looks like that. And what's going to happen is that chemical messenger, acetylcholine, I'll just write, ACH is going to bind to this receptor and that is what is going to change the message from a chemical message to a mechanical message. And if we look here, if I really zoom in, you will see that the neuron and the muscle don't actually touch one another. You see this? There's space in between and they're not touching one another. So when we talk about that neuromuscular junction that we talked about in the last lecture, that is a space. Remember I said it's a space or a gap? It's a space or a gap where the chemical messengers can cross uh, that gap and bind to the receptors in skeletal muscle. And if you read this here, it tells you exactly what I just said. 
at the neuromuscular junction, the motor neurons, right, that's this right here, releases a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Here's the acetylcholine. It's going to release it across this gap. And that acetylcholine is going to bind to a receptor on the muscle fiber, causing depolarization. What does that mean? That just means more shock waves are going to happen. So if I race all this, and don't fret, I know it's complicated. I'm going to have videos for you. I'm going to have lots of support for you. You're not going to have to worry about it too much. Um, what's going to happen is once that acetylcholine crosses uh, this gap here, let me zoom in. Oops, not going to let me. It's being very difficult tonight. Once this crosses the gap here, the acetylcholine, and it binds to this receptor or this receptor or this receptor, well, then that shock wave is going to continue this way along the sarcolemma. And then that shock wave is going to go down into the T-tubules. And the shock wave is going to go this way along the sarcolemma. And then that shark wave is going to go down into the T-tubules like this. And that is how we are going to trigger the release of calcium, right? So the most important thing on this slide is understand that we have these neuromuscular junctions. I highlighted it here. One, two, three. Okay, if we zoom in on the neuro neuromuscular junction, we can see that inside the neuron, here is the motor neuron, inside of the axon bulbs, here's one, here's another one, Here's another one. We store these vesicles, and inside of those vesicles, we have this chemical messenger that we're calling acetylcholine. And once that shock wave makes its way down the neuron, that triggers the release of these chemical messengers. And those chemical messengers are going to cross this gap right here because the neuron and the skeletal muscle are not touching one another. There is a space. They have to cross that gap, and that's where we're going to have the conversion of the electrical signal to the um, mechanical signal, okay? Um, and we will talk about this a little more. So if you want an um, analogy, because if you look at this picture here, this is an analogy, um, I'm telling you that the neuromuscular junction is like... Um, Imagine that your muscles are like light bulbs, right? And your nerves are like the switch. And when the neuromuscular junction um, is where the light switch connects to the light bulb, right? So in this analogy, I'm saying if we want to turn on the muscle, we want to turn that muscle on, we have to first activate those chemical messengers. And what are those chemical messengers called? Remember, I said acetyl choline and those chemical messengers are going to activate the skeletal muscle and again your nerves they send this electricity right i've been telling you a shock wave right this electrical signal and then this is going to transfer to your muscles and tell them to move so you can kind of read this on your own and make sense of it but it's just another analogy to help you out um and what i wanted to show you here is if we look at skeletal muscle so if I were to ask you, where are my motor muscular junctions? Well, each muscle fiber usually receives only one connection, and it's usually near the center, okay? So when we're talking about motor um, neuromuscular junctions, each fiber usually only receives one signal, and it's near the center. So if we look at this picture here, kind of looks like fish, right? This is the gastrocnemius. This is the muscle in your calf. And you can see that, you know, this is a drawn picture, but it's showing you where the neuromuscular junctions are. And if you look at that muscle, it looks like the neuromuscular junctions are in the center of these fibers. You see that? It's dead center in the fiber. And the same thing here, if we look at the rectus femoris, it's another muscle where the neurons innervate the muscle is in the center of the fiber. So if you look at my pen here, it's all in the center of the fiber. And I said usually um, each um, fiber receives only one connection. And I think a picture that really shows this well 
is um, this one here. So if we look at this picture, we have a motor neuron coming out of the peripheral nervous system. And we looked at this, we looked at this uh, picture in great lengths earlier. And you can see we have one, two, three, four. We have four muscle fibers. And if you look at this picture, each one of these fibers only receives one neuromuscular junction. So for example, this fiber, we only have one. We move down to the second one, we only have one. Move down to the third one, we only have one. Move down to the fourth one, we only have one. So every fiber just receives one signal from a single neuron, and that's what that's showing us here. And this picture here is just kind of saying, um, it's just showing you how the neuron usually innervates the muscle in the center, at least in the center of the fiber. So if I were to draw a fiber, right? So we have one fiber right here. We know it's long and it's cylindrical, right? Here we go. Here we go. We know that it's striated, right? Because muscle fibers are striated. Well, if this fiber is to receive an receive a message from the neuron, well, it's probably going to have its neuromuscular junction right about here in the center of the fiber. And that's what this is showing you. In this example, we see the fibers are running this way and this way. And the fibers are running this way and this way. And the fibers are running this way and this way. So the neuromuscular junction is dead center in all of these fibers. So that's all this picture is really showing you. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is stop here and I'm going to save the rest of this lecture for um, class on Monday. We do have a couple more slides left, but I, I do want to be uh, in class with you guys when we talk about these and I want to be able to answer questions. So I'm going to stop there. You have plenty to study. You have plenty to go over. So please take good notes. Please write down questions that you have so when we get to class, we can discuss these things and uh, make sure you guys are good and ready for the next few steps.